Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, GTC 2021, NVIDIA announced it was going to make its own processor for the data center, so a server processor. Now, that was quite a big announcement because, of course, normally you get chips from Intel and from AMD that are used in the data center. But now NVIDIA said, no, we want to offer you a complete solution, including our GPUs and now our CPUs that work in the data center. Great for machine learning, great for streaming, online game streaming, and so on and so on. Now, this year at GTC 2022, NVIDIA has revealed more information about this chip. Now, we knew it was called the Grace processor, but now there's going to be a thing called the Grace super chip. So what is a super chip? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so in 2021, we knew that there was going to be this processor called Grace, and we knew it was going to be based on the ARM architecture. And of course, we know that NVIDIA wanted to buy ARM. That has now fallen through. However, NVIDIA still continue to use the ARM architecture. Now, of course, NVIDIA is also all about GPU. So before we can talk about this super chip, we need to understand that uh, NVIDIA also announced a new architecture for its GPUs called Hopper. And this is now the next generation that's going to be used for machine learning and for AI tasks, but also, of course, eventually that will be in uh, you know, actual graphics cards as well. So Hopper is the new GPU architecture. Now, what NVIDIA do in the data center is they offer their GPUs uh, for machine learning tasks. So you've got self-driving stuff, you've got all of the stuff they want to up in the cloud, voice recognition, all this kind of stuff. So it's all there available in their uh, GPU offering now with the Hopper uh, architecture and they've got modules that you can build up in uh, to uh, kind of units that you buy pods they call them for the kind of supercomputers that you can build for your AI machine learning needs all from NVIDIA. Now the first thing that NVIDIA announced is that they're going to provide a module which has both got the CPU and the GPU on it in one module so that's the same as you get the GPU kind of on an external card but now it's actually on the same module connected with an interlink. Now, NVIDIA had already shown previously in 2021 kind of some mock-up diagram, like up pictures showing that there would be an NVIDIA uh, GPU next to the CPU, but they didn't tell us anything about it. And now we know it's the Grace CPU with the Hopper GPU, Grace Hopper, which of course the famous uh, computer scientist. So they've named it after after her. So you'll be able to get a module with a Grace ARM V9 CPU and with a GPU combined on the same module. And they're calling that a super chip in that it is a dis uh, CPU and GPU connected with a very, very high speed uh, interconnect there on a single module. But more than that, they've also said you can get now a Grace CPU and a Grace CPU, and those are connected together with the high speed interconnect. And that will just ship as a C uh, CPU module. In fact, including up to one terabyte of RAM all on the one module using 500 watts. Now this Grace Super chip with the two Grace processors on it will have 144 cores and will have 396 megabytes of cache on it and then that can be surrounded by lots and lots of RAM. So 144 cores ARM V9. Now the question is what ARM V9 design is it? It's not one that Nvidia is designing, it's definitely a Neoverse design from ARM. So just a quick refresh, ARM Cortex processors like the Cortex uh, X1, the X2, the A710 and so on are found in smartphones and also in other mobile devices, laptops, tablets and so on. Now up in the data center, ARM have a different set of processors that are kind of based on not only the energy efficiency you get from ARM, but also the fact that you want lots and lots of cores. We're talking here about 144 cores. You want lots of caching, lots of high speed interconnects. You want to make sure the memory interface is much, much more aggressive and has higher bandwidth than you get, let's say, on a smartphone. And that's their Neoverse range. And so far we've had Neoverse N1, Neoverse V1, and Neoverse N2, so three chips. Now the v Neoverse N1 and V1 are ARM V8 architectures. So the difference between the V1 and the N1 is the N1 is designed for scaling out massively to the cloud. The more cores you have, the better. Not necessarily the fastest single threaded performance, but more cores to handle all of that data center traffic. The V1 is aimed at having the highest single threaded performance and not so many cores, but it also includes a much bigger and wider SVE 
DE engine, which means it's good for machine learning and for data center kind of workloads. When you look at the description of the V1 and the N1, the V1 clearly says it's designed for HPC, cloud and for machine learning. Now we know that the Gray CPU will be using ARM V9 and the only ARM V9 Neoverse process that exists today is the N2. But a lot, of, and a lot of websites are saying, therefore, the Grace is using the N2 CPU design, and it may do. But I have a little theory. I think it's going to use the V2. Why? Well, there are a couple of things that NVIDIA have said. First of all, they're designing this processor for HPC Cloud and for machine learning, which means it's going to need those SVE extensions with a big SVE engine, which is something the N2 doesn't offer. And also, there's this quote. Combining the highest single threaded core performance with support for ARM's new generation of vector extensions, the Gray CPU Superchip will bring immediate benefits to many applications. So SVE and highest single core threaded performance, that's a V1 chip, but in fact V2, because it's going to be ARM V9. Now we're expecting the V2 to be announced sometime this year, and it's going to have ARM V9, but with that single threaded performance and probably a very big and beefy SVE engine. And that, I think, is what NVIDIA have already got their hands on. That's normal. All of the partners that work with ARM don't find out about these chips when we find out about them. They know about them for you know years in advance because it takes years to design their own chip. They're not going to suddenly say, oh, look, there's a new chip. Coming. We'll start designing today. No, no, no. They're designing the chips now. In fact, we know that Grace has been in development in 2021, development 2022, shipping in 2023. And that fits the timeline of the V2 that's going to be announced this year, and then we'll start to see chips coming out in 2023. So I think we're going to see a 144-core ARM V9 Neoverse V2 processor from NVIDIA, and that is the Grace Superchip. Now, NVIDIA says it's going to be able to provide Grace with Hopper in different types of configurations. As a module, so something you plug into a motherboard, you're going to get one Grace with one Hopper. You can get two Grace CPUs, which gives you that a super chip. You can also get one Grace and two Hoppers. And you can also build systems with Grace and Hopper modules in it. So that's a motherboard with different sockets, different slots for the CPU and for the GPU. And in those configurations, you can get two Grace CPUs and up to eight Hopper GPUs. And that will then go into kind of a rack mount, that goes into a pod, that then goes into a big supercomputer and so on. So NVIDIA really gunning for this machine learning uh, kind of workspace that it sees in itself that everywhere is going to move that way beyond just a traditional web server, email server, you know, database server kind of stuff that we have today. And of course, that fits in with all of their vision that they're offering to do with uh, AI and to do with machine learning and to do with all of their ways of robotics, self-driving cars. They really are into all this much, much more than just a GPU company. NVIDIA has been, of course, for several years. NVIDIA also announced there's going to be a new Jetson development kit. Here on the channel, I've got reviews, for example, of the Jetson Nano, of the Jetson Xavier development kit. Now there's going to be the Jetson AGX Orion development kit. That's got 12 Cortex-A78 cores in it, 32 gigabytes of memory, and 248 uh, Ampere GPU cores, an absolute monster, and it comes in its own nice little case, so it is a really contained uh, unit. And then, of course, just like all the other Jensen things, there are modules that you can buy, and then, of course, you can incorporate, hardware engineers can incorporate those into their own projects. Now, hopefully, I'm going to get a review unit of that, and so watch out for a review of that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Express. I really hope you enjoyed this look at Superchips. Super chips are the future. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.